Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Technically Explained. In this lecture, we are going to study the amplitude modulation with carrier. This is also known as the amplitude modulation with full carrier or simply the amplitude modulation. Now, in the previous video, if you remember, we studied the double side band suppressed carrier amplitude modulation. And if you remember, the double side band suppressed carrier amplitude modulation required synchronous or coherent detection which means that the receiver needed to possess a carrier that has the same frequency and same phase that was present on the transmitter side now this requirement is not easy to achieve because the modulated signal might have traveled hundreds of miles and could have suffered from unknown frequencies shift as a result on the receiver side we could have the receiver signal as r of t is equal to AC M T minus T naught and cosine of omega C plus delta of omega T minus T naught. Here this delta omega represents the Doppler shift. Delta omega represents Doppler shift. So in case of the double side band suppressed carrier the receiver needed to be sophisticated enough to estimate this Doppler shift. Now this increased the complexity and the cost of the receiver. This is okay for the point to point communication where we have one sender and one receiver but in broadcast communication where we have one sender and multiple receiver the receiver needs to be inexpensive, cost effective and it needs to be very simple. So for the broadcast communication, disturbed sideband suppressed carrier is not suitable. In that case, in case of the broadcast communication, we need the amplitude modulation with carrier. Now in amplitude modulation with carrier, the transmitter sends a carrier A cosine omega CT along with the modulated signal so that there is no need to generate a carrier at the receiver. In this case, of course, the transmitter needs to transmit at a much higher power level which does increases its cost but that's okay because one complex and costly transmitter is better than multiple complex and costly receiver. So what we do that uh, with the modulated signal which is of the form m of t cosine omega ct we also send the carrier signal which is a cosine omega ct. So we both send the carrier signal and the modulated signal. So we are going to have a cosine omega ct plus m of t cosine omega ct. Let me represent it by this amplitude modulated signal. Now I can write this as a plus m t cosine omega ct. This can be written as a plus m t cosine omega ct. So this is the equation of my amplitude modulation with carrier. Let me name it as equation 1. And if you remember the double sideband compressed uh, carrier equation that was like m of t cosine omega ct. So actually in the amplitude modulation with carrier this m of t is actually replaced by a plus m of t. And if I made a equal to 0 then again we are going to get the double sideband suppressed carrier. Now to convert this into a frequency domain we are going to have that case that amplitude modulation is going to become this will be half first of all let me write for this thing m of t cosine omega ct that we have already written for the double sideband compressed carrier and that was a m of f plus fc plus m of f minus fc and then for this term this will be a divided by 2 the impulse function which is represented by delta delta of f plus fc plus delta of f minus fc so again the spectrum delta uh, the spectrum phi amt is basically the same as that of the double sideband except for two additional frequencies at plus minus fc. Now this a needs to be some positive value and to visualize this we have on the left side the double side band suppressed carrier. So this was the block diagram of the double side band suppressed carrier and this is the block diagram of the double side band with carrier or this simply the amplitude modulation. So in that case 
we add the a with the m of t and then pass to the mixture and as a result we have a plus m of t cosine omega ct now there is a very important result uh, or a very important condition for the detection of this uh, double side band amplitude carrier and that is that a plus m of t the amplitude of a plus m of t that that should be greater than or equal to zero so it means that a must be greater than the m of t and we will see in few minutes why this condition needs to be satisfied for the demodulation or de detection of this amplitude modulation with carrier let us see how is this amplitude modulation done so again i am going to plot the block diagram again we have the signal message signal m of t that has been uh, provided with some offset a and then we have a plus m of t and then has, that has been multiplied by the carrier cosine omega ct as a result we have the modulated signal a plus m of t cosine omega ct as we have written over here a plus mt cosine omega ct so for example my message signal is this m of t so this is my message signal which is m of t and i provided some offset which is some dc value a of course this offset is going to shift this message signal to some upper side to some upper value so as a result a plus m of t will be this value now the next step is to multiply this a plus m of t with a high frequency carrier which is the cosine omega ct so this is my cosine omega ct and this is a high frequency carrier whose frequency is very high that's why we have a shape of, of, of a very high frequency that is varying with respect to the time axis let me write time over here so when this is multiplied by this thing we are going to have the modulated signal which is a plus m of t cosine omega ct so this is my modulated signal which is a plus m of t cosine omega ct and if you can look at this green part this green part is actually my envelope and this is my positive a plus m of t and this is my negative a plus m of t So this green part this lower green part is minus into a plus m of t and this is my positive a plus m of t and if you can look at here the amplitude of this carrier of this modulated signal has been varied with the uh, with the message signal so that's why this is called the amplitude modulation in amplitude modulation the amplitude of the carrier wave is is varied with respect to the message signal so if you can see here the amplitude of this carrier wave has been varied with the message signal as a result we have a plus m of t cosine omega ct now if you want to perform the demodulation we will discuss demodulation of this amplitude modulation this amplitude modulation with carrier in a separate video but if you want to perform the demodulation we need to uh, pass this signal to a rectifier when we pass this signal to a rectifier we are going to have only the positive part for example if i use the half wave rectifier we are going to have only the positive part so this po negative part is going to be filtered out and this positive part is going to be allowed so we are going to have the positive part over here and then when i pass it to the rc uh, rc circuit we are going to have the this uh, only this envelope when we have only this envelope so this is my a plus m of t and then i can subtract the dc value to get the m of t so in this way i can also perform the demodulation this technique is actually called the envelope detection we will discuss the envelope detection in a separate video but but this is how the amplitude modulation is done we have the message signal we provide some offset a as a result we have the a plus m of t we multiplied this with a carrier signal and we have the a plus m of t cosine omega ct which is our modulated signal and then can that can be demodulated using the envelope detector using the rectifier and the rc circuit now there is one important uh, condition that we studied previously that a plus m of t should be greater than or equal to zero else we are we are going to not we will not be able to uh, perform demodulation of this amplitude modulation so let, let us see why why is it so so for example we have a plus m of t not greater than zero so here i have the condition where the a plus m of t is not greater than zero is not greater than zero now in this case again i have the message signal m of t that has been provided with some offset a as a result we have a plus m of t and then that has been multiplied with a high frequency carrier wave as a result we have the modulated signal a plus m of t cosine omega ct 
now if you see this if you see that that because we have provided the a very small the a is from here to here and because a is not greater than m of t that is m a plus m of t is not greater than zero as a result we have a zero crossing over here if we can see as a result we have a zero crossing over here and as a result we have a phase reversal now if we want to perform its demodulation again we are going to pass it to the rectifier and the rc circuit as a result we are going to get the signal because the rectifier is going to uh, pass only the positive part so as a result this envelope is going to be passed and as a result we are going to have a signal of this positive signal this is my t the upper side is going to be passed and as a result i am going to have the positive signal now if you can have a look this is not my original signal this is not my a plus m of t so i cannot recover the original signal from this envelope so that is why a plus m of t should be greater than zero in this case if you look at this case that when we perform the amplitude modulation in this case we have the a plus m of t greater than zero that is why we do not have any zero crossing over here in case if we have f a plus m of t not greater than zero then we have zero crossing over here and as a result we cannot perform the demodulation we cannot perform the demodulation in that case we have to we have to perform the synchronous demodulation or the coherent demodulation so for the condition of amplitude modulation the double side amplitude modulation is that a plus m of t should be greater than are equal to zero that is a should be selected in such a way that a plus m of t should be greater than or equal to zero else we are not going to perform the demodulation because in that case the envelope detection will not be performed let me write over here the envelope detection will not be performed why because in envelope detection we pass it to the rectifier as a result we are not going to get the original message signal so in that case we have to perform the synchronous detection or synchronous demodulation another term which is called the modulation index and that is represented by mu so what is the modulation index basically if the amplitude if the maximum amplitude of this message signal is let's suppose for example m of p mp then the modulated modulation index is going to be equal to mp divided by a and because this a plus mt is greater than equal to zero that is a must be greater than mp to get the envelope detection so for this reason the modulatic index is going to be equal to less than or equal to one that is it is greater than or equal to zero and that is less than or equal to one now this is for the uh, in case when the message signal is symmetric that is we have mp over here and this minimum amplitude is minus mp now in case we have a message signal with non-zero offset that is uh, the maximum amplitude and the minimum amplitude are non-symmetric in that case modulator modulation index mu can be found out using the equation mu is equal to the maximum amplitude of the message signal minus the minimum mag uh, magnitude minimum amplitude of the message signal divided by 2a plus maximum magnitude of the message signal and the minimum magnitude of the message signal so in that case when the uh, amplitudes of the message signal are not symmetric that is the maximum amplitude is not equal to the minimum amplitude then in that case we are going to use this uh, equation for the modulation index thank you